Sometimes life just throws you a curveball. Sometimes you think you got the perfect existence until fate comes along and plays its next hand. You never really realize what you have. Never notice the little blessings in your life until they start to disappear one by one. Then you act as if you're shocked when everything changes. Shocked as if you had no idea that everything could fall apart like this. But in reality, you knew all along that this could happen. And you knew all along that it would happen. And yet now you're... I'm here. And somehow... Somehow I'm still wondering why it did happen. Somehow it seems unfair. And unbearable. And unimaginable. And yet somehow it's still happening to me. Cancer. It's a word so ugly. So impossible to say. Even more impossible to imagine. And yet it's the only word that could break through the lie I've been living. The only word that reminds me that I'm mortal. And the only word that managed to shatter my life as I knew it. Death seems like such a hard concept to wrap my head around. And yet it's coming far faster than I ever imagined it would. No, the hardest part about having cancer is telling those you care about you won't be there for them anymore. But if I'm not staying here, then where am I going? This is the place that I call my home. What's up, Bohemian Rhapsody? We need to talk. Can you meet me at Corbett's? Fair enough. I'll be there in five. Who is that? It was Alex. I told him to meet me at the park. So you're leaving? I have to tell him. I can't keep this kind of thing from him. Why can't you just tell him over the phone? You wouldn't want to find out like that, would you? Hey. Hey. Any particular reason I had to stop playing Call of Duty? Just one. Well, what was it? Before I tell you, I have to make sure you're able to handle it. Look man, if you're just gonna give me these cryptic answers, I think I'll get back to my video games. I have cancer. What's it called? What's what called? Your cancer. What type of cancer do you have? Leukemia. It's an acute myeloid leukemia. Jesus. Is that bad? Bad and worse. They say they caught it a lot later than they would have liked to. It metastasized to my brain. It's something called a granulocytic sarcoma. Would you mind just dropping the hospital lingo for a second and talking like a regular human being? It's a malignant brain tumor. So... How long have you got? I said I'd be lucky to make it to the spring. Well, then what the hell are we doing sitting around here? There's no point wasting our time being sad about this. We have to go do something. Man, I want to hang out with you. I really do. But I don't want to spend the only time we have together playing video games and watching movies. It just seems so pointless now. But don't you see? That's exactly what we've got to do. It's what we've done with our spare time for as long as we've been friends. What better way to spend the last of the time we have together than by spending it the way we have all along? Now come on, let's go kill some zombies.
you been? I was out with Alex. You've been out with Alex every day this week. And the week before, and the What does it matter to you? Alex is my best friend. I can hang out with him whenever I want. But you've never done it this much. I barely even see you anymore. You leave most mornings before I'm awake, and you come back most evenings without saying a word to me. I get it. You're going through some sort of crisis, and that's completely understandable. You have other friends, and you want to see them too. But what about me? I see you less now than ever, for Christ's sake. I know you're dying, and I know you haven't got long. I've been ready for that day for a while, as sad as it's going to be. But what I wasn't prepared for was to have the few days we had left stolen by someone who doesn't seem to give a damn about what you're going through. That's not true. Oh, it isn't? What did you guys do today? What did you talk about? Did you just spend the whole day watching movies? Did he even ask you how you were feeling? In fact, did he even mention what you're going through at all? I don't really see how this concerns you. Because I'm your sister! Then stop acting like my mother! Why don't you do yourself a favor and open your eyes? Kayla! I really do feel a difference. It didn't really at first, other than the minor symptoms. But now it's far worse. I'm not sure how much longer I can bear it. How much longer until it becomes too much? How much longer till I crumple under the strain of it? I feel like I can no longer confide the living while I'm still among them. For I know they will not understand until I'm gone. That's why I confide here. Jesus. What are you doing here, man? It's 11 o'clock. I know, but it's important. Can I come in? Sure. Any particular reason this couldn't wait until morning? I was just thinking about some stuff. Honestly, I don't think it can wait. Fair enough. I'm listening. Why do you insist on spending every day doing the same thing? Ever since we met each other, all we'd ever do was watch movies and play video games. Even when I told you I had cancer, you still insisted on doing the same thing. It's as if the news didn't affect you at all. I'm starting to wonder if you even care. You can't be serious. I am serious! And quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of this crap. You have literally made no changes to yourself ever since I gave you the news. You keep on living your life the same way as you always have, but what's worse, you're forcing me to live in that life with you. I don't want that. I want to make an imprint on the world. Don't you get it? I don't want to be forgotten. Are you really this blind, man? Don't take all this out on me just because I'm the only one who stuck around with you. I understand you're going through some serious stuff right now, better than anyone else does. That's why I do the same things with you every day. I'm just trying to show you that nothing has changed. I figured I wanted to spend our last days together doing something we both always enjoyed. But that's why you're wrong. I don't want those things anymore. What about me? Did you even consider what I want? Did you ever stop and think about what I'm going through? What I'm going to have to go through? I get it. You're dying. That's all very clear to me. You don't think I realize that more than anyone else? All I've been doing is trying to make things comfortable for you here. Every day since you told me has been the same thing. All I've been trying to do is enjoy the last of the time I have with you. But how the hell am I supposed to do that if you can't? I understand that you're suffering, but that suffering ends. You feel cold, there's a bright light, one final gasp of breath, and then your suffering is over. But what about all those people who care about you, like your parents and your sister? What about me? You never even gave us any thought, never considered the fact that we still suffer. And yet, after all of that, you have the nerve to come over here and say I don't understand what you're going through? You've been too busy blaming everyone else for how your life is falling apart that you've managed to ignore the feelings of the rest of us. I'm hurting, man, and you don't even see it. Every night, I pray for the same thing. I pray that you'll beat this disease and that we'll be able to go back the way things were. I want that more than anything else right now. But you don't give a damn about that, do you? Don't give me this crap about your suffering. You don't know what suffering is. I feel pain I've never felt before every waking moment of my life. And yet you're sitting there pretending like you know what I'm going through? You have no idea what it's like. You give me crap about how you're praying for me? Let me hit you with the cold, undeniable truth, bud. If there's a God up above, he gave up on people like you and me a long time ago. If there was some supernatural being with a heart full of love, constantly looking after us, we wouldn't be in this conversation right now. 
So why don't you do us both a favor and piss off? mistakes in my life. I feared that the biggest one was unfixable when the doctor gave me the diagnosis. I feared being forgotten. I feared that when I disappeared under death's black veil, that my existence would disappear with me, and that life would go on. I feared I had no experience in life, and now I never would. I don't know why this happened to me, and I will probably never understand it, but I realize that it doesn't mean I'm alone. There is a God above, and despite my doubts of his existence, I know that he must be there. And while I may have been too blind to see it, I was never alone. It's not about what you accomplish while you're here, but who you accomplish it with. And deep in my heart, I can feel some comfort in the fact that I know where I'm going now. And someday, they'll all join me in a brighter place.